This is my hobby. The greatest hobby. Hello everyone, Hobbyist here. We are back at it again with our Talisman Character Exploration Guide. And previously, we have concluded the Dragon Expansion characters and how they interact with theirs. And based on what you guys on the Talisman subreddit voted on the poll, this is the next expansion that we're going to be covering. Now, I will say this first right out of the gate. I only think that one character in this entire expansion is actually credible in comparison to the others. And if you want to learn more about the Highlands, I've got videos that are explaining how the Highlands is played, and I've also got a story of what the Highlands is all about. But other than that, let's get into the first character. The first character that we're going to be covering inside of the Highland expansion is a cunning and disreputable rascal who is more than willing to break a few rules. If doing so, we'll put some gold in our pockets. Indeed, this is the rogue. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rogue's character card and see what it is that she's about. As we can see, she's got a strength of three and a craft of three, making her a very balanced character. And because we are covering a new expansion inside of Talisman, we've got ourselves a new logo. So that eagle head logo is the symbol of the Highland expansion. If you want to learn more about the Highland expansion, I'll leave it up top for you guys. So that way you guys can check it out. But essentially, this logo allows you to differentiate its components from the rest of your talisman adventures through the actual region board itself, through the other character cards, through the alternate endings, the Highland deck, and the adventure and spell cards that are going to get merged into the big stack of adventure cards or the big spell deck. And it definitely is just something that makes it a lot easier for you. So moving forward with the rest of the rogue stats, we can see that she's got a fatal four, as well as um, average life of four, and that she is a neutral character who starts in the tavern. Now, from a position point where we're thinking strategically, the rogue is the furthest away from the Highland expansion out of any of the other characters that are going to be inside of this set for this specific region but i do want to say that her abilities more than make up for the lack of position so out of her three character abilities the first one says whenever you fight more than one enemy at the same time you may roll one die and add the result to your attack score okay so it seems pretty straightforward but if you really think about it, because that first ability did not say that it had to specifically be just for battles or specifically be just for psychic combat, the fact that you can have that one die roll and to be able to boost yourself up is definitely a plus. Because inside of the Highland region, there's going to be a plethora of monsters and spirits to where sometimes you're going to need that extra boost. And it's something that you possess that other characters inside of this expansion aren't going to have. So, after of course getting the right weapons and objects that you need in order to boost yourself up, being able to have that extra die roll on top of that is honestly pretty good. However, the second character ability that the rogue has encourages you more so to start going after other players. And the reason that you would want to be doing this is because whenever you defeat a character in battle or psychic combat and choose to take a gold, you may take all of his gold instead. So, the merchant is a character that we talked about back in the Reefer expansion who has the potential to become very rich very quick. Well, if you have the rogue, then you can essentially go after him, and instead of killing him off, you can just take all of his gold. The reason that you would want to be doing this, and that you want to be chasing other players for gold, is because if you're thinking from a big picture standpoint, you can realize that you can use all of this gold inside of the city expansion. 
And honestly, it's just a way bigger influx of money in comparison to the, any of the other characters who have gold or have the ability to produce gold very quickly. Honestly, it is just a more petty and a more fun way to get rich is to just simply go after these other characters. But this third ability is where I want to say that you want to start building up the rogue stats more. Because other times, due to the fact that you are very balanced in your strength 3, craft 3, it's going to be a bit more difficult for you to start getting off the ground and turning in those trophies to build those stats. So, this third ability could maybe give you a way in order to do this quicker, which is, whenever you visit the tavern, mystic or enchantress, you may roll two dice and choose one of the results to use. So, inside of the tavern here, where we've got the rogue at our starting location, you would want to do this maybe because you want to start getting that four, five, six. Because a four inside of the tavern means that you can win a gold. A five is allows you to teleport to any space in the outer region. And then six is an opportunity for you to ferry across from the tavern to the temple, which that option might be something that you need because characters are starting to make a break for the inner region in the late game. So being able to use that and quickly get over could help you make it easier to try to cut off other players from making it to the top of the crown of command. Also, inside of the mystic for the village, which is the furthest away from me, the mystic at the highest value is going to offer you a spell. And based on the base stats of the fact that the rogue has a craft of three, and how we've talked about back in our base game tutorial when it comes to the ratio of craft to spells, we know that the rogue can only carry one spell. And that, that is subject to change as we get higher and higher in craft. So you could become a spell cycler in essence if you are able to use your two dice and maybe choose the six option in order to start gaining spells from the village mystic. And then you can accumulate gold at the tavern or any teleportations. And then when it comes to the enchantress, the enchantress is going to be the place where you build your stats because the city square space, out of all the rolling options that the enchantress has, the enchantress not only has spells like the mystic, but also has the ability for you to gain strength and for you to gain craft. And because the rogue is a very balanced character, then there's no particular path that you have to go down. But now that we are covering a character who is associated with a region-based expansion, I want to now show you how useful that these abilities can be inside of the actual Highland region. So when it comes to working with the rogue inside of the Highland region itself, it's definitely got an interesting way that you go about things. So obviously with the first character ability being able to add one dice and roll it to add that to your additional attack score, we can see all of these various spaces that have areas in which you can draw highland cards starting from the very top as you come up towards where the highland deck is and then you come down and around through the mountain pass down the ravine and then eventually you make your way up to the eagle king now because you have the ability to add one extra dice and roll it this could also prove fruitful to you when it comes to battling the Eagle King himself. Because, like I mentioned earlier, this is going to either add this to your strength or add this to your craft. And when battling the Eagle King, you choose which one of the two that you're going to pick to fight him with. And then that determines whether you get a relic, 
whether you get to teleport, or if you just get kicked back down the mountain where you have to start your trek up again. And then of course, character PvP, there are specific cards that could summon characters to certain locations. And then, other than that, there's not really much else that the Rogue offers inside of the Highland region itself. You just simply have to make sure that you are invested in yourself enough with your die roll and with your gold in order to make your trek up the Highland region and eventually make your way through the Ridge Bay all the way up to the top. Because out of these three corners, just how it's very similarly formatted inside of the Woodland expansion, how it's similarly formatted inside of the Dungeon expansion, these three corners are going to play a role into various means of being able to advance. So with the ridge way, it's just simply moving your way forward. And then with the mountain pass, you're able to roll a six. And you can come down once more to the Lost City. And then of course, the Lost City has its own set of rolling. To which you could gain things from a talisman, you could get a relic from the Eagle King without having to fight him, you could get a talisman, you could gain some gold, there are so many things and so many opportunities inside of the Lost City that are available to you, especially if you made sure that your stats were all prepared in using your attacks. Even though she's got some advantages inside of the Highland region, Overall, I think the Rogue is a pretty lackluster character, especially if we compare her to the rest of the other Highland characters. She's not very versatile. Most of her abilities can be taken simply at face value. There's no deeper way or multiple ways that this ability can be used in more than one expansion. If you're only playing with the Highland expansion and you've got your base game board as your layout, you don't really have much to offer, simply put. But overall, based on all of this, I hope you guys enjoyed this very much. And I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button as I don't want you guys to miss out on this plethora of knowledge to where maybe your next talisman game, if you've been having bad luck, that you can find the right characters and being able to move along on the next step of your adventure. See you guys.